On Wednesday, August 14th, we'll start with the councilor roll call. No need to run. I can do it. Councilor Young? Here. Chair Mevaji? Present. Councilor Belcott? Present. Councilor Bowerman? Present. And Councilor Marshall? Here. Okay, we have a full house. Any amendments to the agenda? Not today. All right, and reading once more from our rules of procedure that try to guide this as a business meeting open to the public so the public can hear and participate with certain rules. And those rules essentially are addressing the council will not make statements or remarks that concern private activities, lifestyles, or beliefs of others. And I would add, you know, partisan politics is pretty much uh, unlawful uh, to be supported by the county council. So anything about a party, uh, their PCOs, their agenda, this isn't a platform for any particular party. And, and if you are going to interrupt and laugh, then we will ask that you be removed because you are disrupting the council hearing. I know that most of these rules don't seem to be abided by, and I wish we did have a process that we could suspend people's participation because all they do is interrupt the business of the county. So uh, individual county employees or elected officials, uh, I'm going to ask security to remove this woman in a minute because she is constantly disrupting. You need to be quiet while we're talking up here. Interrupting the council is a form of trespass and it will be enforced. So topics unrelated to the business of the county are prohibited and today particularly we'll speak only to agenda items. And one of the examples of that is referring back to minutes from like six months ago and talking about 4th of July proclamations that are not on the minutes. All right, with those caveats, and hopefully uh, participants will actually pay attention to the rules today, are there any public comments in the room? Do we have a uh, Wynn Gersich? So could you identify the topic that you're speaking to on the agenda? Start my clock over, please. Yeah, they, they have the clock going. I'm talking about 7.1 and 7.2. This opiate crisis, there's a movie out right now called uh, Firing Squad. Y'all should watch it because there's zero tolerance in Indonesia and other countries. And anybody that does drugs, they kill them. They go in front of a firing squad and they give them the Bible right before they die. So the thing that's amazing is we had zero tolerance. We wouldn't have this problem. These people come across the border and, and they wouldn't be bringing this stuff. We wouldn't be spending all of this money to do what? Unbelievable. So it's time that we get tougher rules on opiates and things like that. Plus the fact that you look up Ashley Bridger, she had more information than Dr. Milnick, PhD. She had the update things of March of this year. And uh, the one that worked on your thing last time, she had the stories from last 2023. And I had them in my hand because I got them from Ashley. You need her on your team if you want to do something about opiates and drugs. The second thing is water. The PFOAs in water is fluoride. The F is fluoride. And I think right now you need to stop the fluoridation for the fact 
that you've already got too much medicine in the water. So if the PFOA has fluoride and you put in sodium fluoride, which is this, see the skull and crossbone on the bag from China? This is the fluoridation you buy for, for battleground. So when you put this poison in the water and you got PFOAs in it, you just overdose the public. And it should be stopped immediately and you can do that. You don't need a vote. This council right here needs to stop the fluoridation because you've already poisoned the people with double the dose. And if you recycle the toilet water, every toothpaste, every gentle gel, everything that goes down that drain is recycled and you can't get them out. So the thing that's kind of amazing is this tells you all the good stuff that's happening. Another way to clean up the water is to stop the chemtrails. Eight states in this nation have stopped the chemtrails. This is important. And there's other things too, if you want stuff for your drugs, money for that, stop the diversity, inclusion, and, and that thing, the D, that stuff that you're paying for, you can use the money for the police department. Because when you're doing this diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's, that's a bunch of garbage, that's part of the UN. And 28 states got out of that. So they had more money for police enforcement. So you don't have to tax the public. Don't waste any more money because what you're doing is really important. But most of all, this is the EPA union who wants out of fluoride and it has everything that this does to your body. And if our public was smart enough, they'd look this up on your public records. But the EPA union wants to stop fluoridation and the Biden administration stopped the judge from giving the findings because it would have stopped fluoridation nationwide. Anyway, this is okay, on public record. Okay, thank you. That does conclude your time. Is there any other public comment from in the room? We do. We have Carmen De Leon. Hello, my name is Carmen De Leon, and I'm talking about the old business minutes of uh, August 2nd, which is on here, and uh, during minute, um, Um, well, we spoke about the rules right here, minute 47 of this day, uh, whatever dude, um, talked about the rules. And if you're going to be telling people to abide by rules, then you must be the first one setting the example. That includes not okay, insulting that is not, people. I am talking uh, about the minutes. If you have a correction. I am, uh, this is uh, a correction minutes, because we'll you are not abiding that, by the rules and you're you interrupting me. Can we stop the clock so I can... Ma'am, it is not on the minutes. If you have a correction to the minutes, we'll entertain that. It's not on for business today. Yeah, it, as long, you will never be interrupted if you would stop interrupting me or violating the rules. Okay. Okay. So your time is up if you have nothing to talk about on the agenda. Do you have anything on the agenda to discuss? Okay. Okay, your, interrupt, your time is exceeded. Your time is up. Thank you for your comment. Are there any comments online? We have a caller. Thank you. I would like to have my minutes start over just taking my time. I'm trying to tell Step away from the microphone. We have other people to provide comments on the agenda items. Go ahead with the online comments. If you could ask her to please move away from the microphone. Hello, you've been unmuted. Please go ahead with your comment. More chaos at the Clark County Council meeting. This is Kimberly Goheen Elvin, Patriot Life Citizen of Clark County, Washington, doing my duty for God, family, and country. I'm going to mention, first of all, right off the bat, that on the agenda for 1 o'clock council time, I tried three, well, five times, actually, twice on two phones here to uh, put in the access code that you have here for the 1 o'clock. So I kind of put my brain on and thought, well, I'll try their work session phone number. And sure enough, that's the one that I'm on right now is your work session. You show the work session as another uh, webinar number. And then you scroll down when we do our one o'clock agenda, I go to a different access code number and that did not happen. Okay, and I'm really upset about that. It took a lot of time and um, 
effort for me to do this. So straighten that up. Another thing I'd like to make a comment, uh, nothing personal to um, anybody there, but um, the minutes, the old business 4.1 minutes was not able to tap on. I see it is now from last night. So I appreciate that. I will be speaking on those minutes and I'm gonna tell the council right now that in those minutes, first of all, I'll say that again, uh, council member Michelle Belcott was absent. I will also state that uh, on um, that agenda, we did speak about our proclamation for um, July to be Independence Month that you stole from us, and we're going to say yeah, that. So it's, it's on not the like there. a thing in perpetuity if that you, you can like just that. keep bringing it up every minutes, meeting please. and then Stop referring back to the minutes. If you have a correction Stop or addition, like you just did with uh, an app, it wasn't showing an absentee of, uh, of a council member, that's an appropriate comment. But going back to July and just regurgitating the same statements over and over again is not an appropriate comment on the minutes. Go ahead, you okay, can you continue. Okay, you can start my minutes now. Thank you for taking 40 seconds of my time. So my time should have, uh, it You're will welcome. include 35 more seconds. Um, on work session number seven, and don't be a smart ass, Mr. Medvedge. On number 7.1, update on okay, your opioid. Okay, let's cut off the uh, microphone say, if she can't be uh, civil on her comment. Okay, any other comments online? Okay. So that concludes public comment. We'll go to old business, the minutes of August 7th, 2024. I move approval. Second. Further discussion, comments? All those in favor, please say I aye. I want my time back. Aye. I want my time aye. back now. Any I want my opposed? time opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to new business, number five. None today. Okay, going on to uh, item number six, counselor reports. So um, I'll bring it up if no one else is going to. We've, we've had some discussions by by rules and law, we're, we're not supposed to talk about executive session and that's appropriate uh, in most circumstances and sometimes we can waive uh, that executive privilege to talk about things in public. I don't think we need to get into that today, um, but we um, would like to get to a hearing, I believe, uh, if the majority supports it, to talk about the GMA and our non-compliance finding by the board, as well as our never-ending pending lawsuit uh, to seek redress at the Court of Appeals. I think no one anticipated that that was gonna continue on for so long. I mean, it's been a, a year or more uh, that the initial filing was made I think there wasn't a single counselor here that was anticipating that we would actually lose grants, um, hoping for a Court of Appeals determination. I believe it was publicly said that by every counselor that we intended to be in compliance with the GMA and certainly would abide by the Court of Appeals ruling or uh, certainly the remote possibility that we would ask uh, the Supreme Court to take the issue up. But the bottom line is we're stuck. There's uh, an administrative body that essentially made law, at least for um, most of our opinion, as well as what was initially told to us by staff and the lawyers, and recently doing some research as well. There is no state statute that requires an environmental impact statement prior to the county putting in an overlay. And that had been the law. Uh, there's no statute that requires it. So certainly there's an argument, um, part of the law for, for the board that governs the board, and it's a good law, is to try to, uh, and the county for that matter, it, it tries to ensure that you have the earliest review 
of environmental impacts when you have a detailed enough project. Now, typically across the state and by precedent, prior practice, that would occur when there was a specific permit request for a specific project, not for an overlay. An overlay has no impact. When it is passed, it is, it is on a map. It doesn't impact any streams or forests or farmland. It has no impact. It is only until the projects are then considered and it makes sense to require an, uh, an environmental impact statement. This council, I, uh, way back when, reversed itself and where the staff and everyone else agreed there was no environmental impact by this overlay. Uh, we reversed ourselves to require the, uh, the person requiring the, or requesting the change uh, to conduct an environmental impact statement, fully complying with the GMA. So uh, I definitely misspoke when we were caught by surprise by those significant grants that we lost when a clean water division was briefing us. And so I misspoke, and I'm sorry for the, if I said anything against the staff or, or PA, we were warned uh, about the potential impacts. It's just, boy, after a year, you kind of forget. And the, the reality is, from my point of view, is that the administrative board overreached. They overstepped. They created law that is not in statute. They are not a law binding. They are not a legislative branch. So we have a right to seek review by the Court of Appeals. And unfortunately, it is just taking so long. Uh, and in that vein, I'll just conclude with one further comment. This is a separation of powers issue where the executive branch um, is enforcing the law through an administrative board and then we don't have any timely means to appeal it. It's already been handed from one district to another. Um, it's been over a year, and we have no end in sight at this point. We don't know when they're going to hear it. We don't know when they're going to render their opinion. Uh, the last we heard, and I don't know if that was an executive or not, it's certainly public record that um, oral arguments were scheduled. but. But even that date's tentative because of the unavailability of some of the parties. And by the way, there is another party, the applicant, who also is involved in the, in the lawsuits. So I think we need to address this, knowing that uh, this could continue to go on for months, if not years. And in the meantime, this county is being punished by the denial of low-cost loans, and grant. That is wrong. That should not be happening. The court should have stopped that uh, during the pendency of, of the appeal, but evidently there's no basis in law to do that, nor do I believe we actually asked for that remedy. We should have. But this is it's a separation of powers issue where the courts aren't uh, we don't have redress to the courts uh, to interpret the law that the legislature has passed. So in any case, I, I'm raising it because I think we need to have a public hearing. We need to tee this up again to see if we want to do something different. You know, both Karen Bowerman and I won't be here next year. And the way it looks, this will be continuing. Uh, and I certainly think we need to deliberate and publicly on which path to take. And I will just add one last thing. If we reverse course, there is very little chance that the court will hear the, the appeal. There, the issue will not be justiciable again, meaning it'll be moot, and they will say, there's no more action for them, which then sticks every county with the possibility within this board's range and jurisdiction 
that they're going to have to be doing multiple environmental impact statements for every zone, every overlay, and then once the projects are finally submitted in sufficient detail to actually conduct the study, time, cost, delay, that's what counties will be looking for if this issue is not resolved. So, or the legislature takes it on and creates a fix. But if we, if we reverse course uh, on the overlay, that most likely the, the, our appeal will be dismissed. The issue will never be resolved um, by the courts. So having said all of that, is anyone else interested in having a public hearing on this to, set, to get it on the calendar and start moving forward to discuss this publicly? Sam, should we do a roll call? Uh, I'm sorry, Michelle, go ahead. I couldn't quite hear you though. Sorry, Chair. I said um, I'm interested, but should we do a roll call? I'd like to discuss a little bit. So I have brand new hearing aids, and I think they're, they're actually worse than. Yeah, I think she said she was interested and asked the question if a roll call would be needed, which it's not. Yeah. So, Glenn, I know, so we need to set a schedule to even get to a point where we can publicly discuss this and, and then take a public vote. I'd just like a little clarification. So we're making a decision on whether or not to bring this forward as an agenda item for a future council time meeting or a public hearing, or there's one step to, that might lead to another. So I think the T on this was uh, the manager's email that we were suggesting a council time to eventually get us to that public hearing where we could take action if we wanted to. So. The very next step would be if we agree to set it up for a council time, I assume. Do you agree with that? Let yes, yes. Um, so what I would suggest is yes, yeah, that the council, if the majority of the council wanted to put the subject matter on for council time, during that time the council could publicly discuss and then a majority of the council would need to agree to set a public hearing at that time. And then at the public, you're right, at the public hearing is when information would be provided and then a vote would be taken at that time concerning the overlay. So with that in mind, Michelle, did you wish a roll call to even see if we were going to follow that course? Is that what your point comment was? Um, Chair, no, I, I didn't know if that was the protocol or not, but if it's not necessary and we all just come to a, a collective agreement, then that's fine by me. And I guess I just want to make clear then that the sort of motion, so to speak, is to set this for a council time for council discussion, correct? So other... Other comments by council? Karen, I haven't yes. heard from you. Glenn, I haven't I support, heard from you. I support the idea of putting it on council time for discussion. And one of the things to be decided there is whether or not to go to public hearing um, and look at all the alternatives of what uh, action could be taken. Thank you. Glenn, comments? Yes, I'm supportive. I'm supportive as well, and I think having it on agenda with ample notice to the public if they want to uh, add any information to our deliberations would be very good. Okay, so any other counselor reports? Sure, I, I have a report. Please. Um, I just wanted to mention that last night, um, Chair Mebaji and I have both attended the CTRAN meeting and ODOT gave us um, a presentation on the IBR project. Um, they mentioned that the SEIS uh, study would be uh, released somewhere probably in the September timeframe before the holidays started to happen. 
and they are having two public meetings, one on Tuesday, August 20th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., and one on Saturday, August 24th from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. I checked their website and they didn't, they don't disclose the location and I don't see it on their public meeting uh, event calendar. So more to come with that, but um, I'm going to follow up with them on where the locations of those meetings are for their open houses to the public to kind of describe what's happening. And they mentioned last night when I asked uh, what the, the status was with the Coast Guard that they're still discussing the bridge height with them and some of the surrounding businesses. So um, more to come with that. Thank you. Other council reports? I have something I would just like to share. Uh, this was in the paper yesterday that three Clark County projects were among 12 winners of the 2024 Governor's Smart Communities Award. So it includes Clark County's uh, Housing Options Study and Action Plan, and the comment was willingness to do more than what is required to uh, implement housing options. Uh, the East uh, Community Solar Project, which was the port of Camas Washugo and Clark Public Utilities, uh, installing solar panels on some industrial sites. And then finally, Clark County's Aging Readiness Plan, uh, and the judge's uh, comment was just the sheer scope of work and extensive outreach and long-term partnership was noteworthy. So good news on that front. Yeah, thanks for highlighting that. And certainly I would encourage each and every one of you to thank uh, Oliver and team and all the participants, our consultant, I and mean, we had a lot of players involved, but the public just doesn't know what we're working on. We're still getting emails about, why don't you do something about affordable housing? We're, we are trying, um, but thanks for repeating that. I wanted to uh, just touch on something Michelle brought up at CTRAN. I had brought it up the last council report after a meeting with the Humane Society only to highlight the point of intercity and county planning on road infrastructure, highlighting 192nd and all of the confluence of um, new development and construction that's going on there, uh, commercial and residential and otherwise. Um, what occurred at CTRAN is I raised the issue with them on the topic of, well, the Humane Society is a hub. They do thousands of adoptions every year and there's no bus line that goes there, which generated some interesting discussion. But the discussion ultimately was, it's hard to put a bus line there because the road is so bad. You know, it goes from four to two lanes and the congestion is just so bad. Uh, they have not put a bus route there to service uh, the Humane Society. So I, I just want to highlight that again because we need to do more, especially on these fringe areas, especially where two cities abut each other and the county uh, also has a road network that services the entire area. Uh, any other councilor reports? I have a question for Councilor Belcott. Please go ahead. In your report, you were talking about the public meetings that uh, are going to be coming up. I wondered uh, on the IBR, I wondered if some of the important issues that we've discussed in the past, like uh, bridge height, bridge safety, and tolls, are going to be decided before that public meeting, that first one on the 20th. Councillor Bowerman, they didn't say, it sounded like they were having more or less a general um, open house to discuss what's happening with the IBR. But from what I gathered last night, it sounds like there's something new happening every day because they, they're they ne still negotiating the details of the bridge. So I plan on attending one of those um, when the location comes out. Um, so I can, I'll, I'll find out and I'll let you know. Okay. 
Greg, Greg Johnson was supposed to do the briefing, but he wasn't able to attend, and it was an assistant uh, briefing. And uh, so it was just kind of a gloss once over the world. Um, I would also point out, for the first time I heard about their plan, whatever design they have, either a single level or a double level, uh, to actually process their stormwater runoff, which is the first I've heard of that issue. Which, So I don't know if that impacts ultimately our county stormwater permit, uh, but they did, I did ask a question about it, and they did say that they are planning on having some kind of uh, facility on either side of the bridge. So both on the Oregon side and the Washington state side. So um, hopefully we can get dialed into that discussion. It was couched in terms of, well, what's Vancouver's permit? Are they gonna connect directly into Vancouver system? Are they gonna have a standalone system? Uh, so lots of details. I can't remember how many contracts they said they were gonna have, but it was uh, close to 14 major construction contracts once they uh, get ready to start moving. And construction could, could be as early as the end of 2025. So lots more to pay attention to. Anything further on councilor reports? Okay, we'll move on to seven work session request 7.1, Opioid Abatement Council. Yes, so uh, there has been a couple minor um, updates or, uh, from Councilor Marshall and Councilor Young who are on there and some awards have been approved. But in the Carillon contract, there is a contract provision to provide quarterly updates to the council. So they are looking for 15 to 30 minutes just to provide an update to council. I'll give a thumbs up. How about everybody else? Okay, it looks universal. And then the second one is from the Clean Water Commission. They would like to come to council to um, share their 2023 annual report and highlight their accomplishments as well as go over their 2024 goals. They're looking for 30 minutes towards the end of this month. Same interest, two thumbs, three, four, or five. Thank you. And policy updates, obviously, Jordan is still not back. That's correct. Anything further on that? No, thank you. Okay, so we'll move off of eight. Nine is executive sessions. 10 minutes pending litigation, RCW 42.30.110, paren one, paren little i. Um, any possible action after that? No after action. Okay, and it's... Okay, let's, we'll go ahead and shoot for 145. That may be optimistic, but we'll try it. Okay, so we'll uh, step into our executive session with the lawyers and come back, resume this hearing at 145. Okay, we've conducted our executive session with the lawyers and there is no action at this time. So we'll go ahead and adjourn council time.